，好，我们差不多开始了，非常呃欢迎大家在周六的早上能够参加我们的 Open H W 有三呃 Asia Group 的活动。目前呢，这是我们第一次官方举办的 Seminar 活动，那么非常欢迎我们今天的参会的。呃，演讲者，然后 Open H W Group 的呃成员，以及我们新成立的 Open 呃 Open H W a r a Group 的呃组委会的成员。那么今天的议程是这样的，我们首先是会由 Duncan 来介绍一下 Open H W Group 和 a s i a Group 的一些呃基本情况。那么接下来是由石康老师介绍一下 A W G 目前的呃一些基本更为细节的一些基本组成，然后他是用中文来进行演讲的。那么接下来的后面是由呃 David 介绍的 Open Open H W 呃处理器盒的的设计上的一些路线图。那么由于时间的关系呢，它是进行预录是一个预录制的演讲。那么接下来是 Mike 在会进行介会介绍一下在呃 verification 就是程序验证在这个处理器盒的验证方面相关的一些呃现状和工作。那么呃，最后一个演讲是由我来进行的，就是在 Open GW 软件方面的一些现状、呃工作进展和可能呃可以参与的一些方面。那么最后呢，会有一个呃在线的问答环节，那么是由 Open GW 呃组织的 Duncan， 然后以及新成立的 Open GW AWG 的呃呃指导委员会的成员，包括明杰、呃云海，呃包括我在内。那么。好，时间关系，我们今天的呃我的介绍就到这里。接下来我们把整个呃画面交给 Duncan， 然后由 Duncan 来介绍一下。呃，他的题目是 Introduction to Open HDI Group and Asia Working Group. Thank you very much, Wei, for the introduction. So my name is Duncan Bees. I am the director of technical programs for Open Hardware Group, and、uh, very pleased to give you an, an overview today of、uh, both the Open Hardware Group as well as our objectives in forming. The Asia Working Group.、Um, so, just to get started,、uh, a little bit of agenda for today's webinar. Thank you for the introduction, Wei. I will, as I said, give you a, a brief overview of our technical work in the Open Hardware Group and how that relates to the Asia Working Group that we have recently formed. Dr. Xu Kan will give a.、Uh, Presentation also from the AWG Steering Committee, so he he is a member of the Steering Committee and will explain the importance of the Asia Working Group、um, from the Steering Committee perspective. Then we'll have a presentation from two Open Hardware staff members,、uh, Davide Schiavoni, who is the director of our Cores、uh, Task Group, as well as Mike Thompson, who is the director of our Verification、uh, Technology Work.、Um, Then Wei will come back with a、uh, presentation on the Open Hardware Software Roadmap, and then we'll encourage you in the audience to ask questions. We have also several、uh, steering committee members on hand today,、uh, Ming Chi Xin and Yun Hai Shang.、Um, as you notice, some of our presentations are going to be in Chinese, and some are in English. That reflects the fact that many of the Asia Working Group、uh, members and potential members、uh, are in China, and so we created a hybrid presentation for you today. A little bit about Open Hardware Group. It's an, a not-for-profit and global organization、uh, developing technology around open-source hardware cores,、um, where both hardware and software designers、uh, collaborate in an open-source process. Uh, besides cores, we develop related IP that you'll you'll hear some description of today,、uh, tools and the software that supports that core family.、Uh, we call that core family the Core Five family of open source、uh, Risk Five processors. So Open Hardware Group has a very international footprint with developers spanning、uh, all regions of the globe. We provide up-to-date open-source infrastructure for、uh, hosting these hardware development programs, and we have strong support from both industry,、uh, academic members, as well as individual contributors worldwide. Our membership is very diverse. These are our industrial members, and on the top of the chart, you'll see our platinum members in the Open Hardware Group. Those are the board members who drive the the board-level decisions. But you see that we have a very wide、uh, industrial membership, which is growing quite quickly. 
uh, again, from companies around the, the, the globe active in semiconductor development, software development, and other related fields. Our academic members are also very diverse, and we this has been a cornerstone for Open Hardware Group's work. A lot of the work has originated from um, a cutting edge research in key universities worldwide, and has been brought into Open Hardware Group where we have um, worked to bring that uh, work to industrial quality through verification. You can see a wide variety of, of universities and research institutes including some of our AWG steering members here today, ISCAS and ICT. Uh, we also have a network of partners. These are companies or organizations that we are affiliated with, and we co collaborate in development of, of uh, open source uh, development. And as you'll see in my presentation, we're very keen to expand our partner ecosystem to some of the key uh, open hardware oriented groups, particularly in China. So Open Hardware Group is structured as a, a, a number of working groups. The board of directors, of course, uh, as I've already mentioned, uh, the technical work is done through the our TWG technical working group. And the TWG acts as a, a like an engineering organization for a company would, uh, drives uh, project process uh, and project decisions so the members of Open Hardware decide which open source projects we will take on, and it's divided into um, various subtask groups uh, that you'll that you see there. We have a marketing working group, and we have the two new working groups, Open Hardware Asia and Open Hardware Europe, and their purpose is to provide focus on regional requirements for the Open Hardware ecosystem. Um, open Hardware Group also has a substantial engineering staff which works with the members uh, to develop technology uh, and to guide the, uh, the implementation of the open source process. We have over 20 uh, active open source projects through all uh, sides of the, uh, of the uh, hardware development or uh, IP development. So including RTL projects, verification, uh, software compilers, um, IDEs, uh, et cetera, as well as hardware enabling um, projects such as FPGA implementation. Um, and you, you'll hear more about uh, uh, many of these areas today. We, we like to think that our open source process is closely inspired by industrial processes. We have a gate review um, system for making project decisions and for reviewing the progress of projects as they, as they move through that flow. So this is uh, administered by the technical working group. And if you would like to get involved in open hardware, you'll be a, uh, you'll, all members participate in making these decisions. So uh, right from initial project concept development through uh, final checklists for RTL freeze or other uh, project freeze uh, steps. I wanted to talk a little bit about one of our key example projects. Um, and this is the core five MCU. The Core 5 MCU integrates um, the uh, processor IP that was developed by and developed and verified by Open Hardware Group. That's the CV32E40P uh, embedded processor. And it integrates that within uh, system on chip architecture with a number of peripherals, memory interconnects, um, and, and uh, RAM on board, also with the embedded FPGA. Um, uh, technology from one of our members, QuickLogic. This is a really key project for us that integrates the work for, from um, many, many companies. And we're very close to achieving tape out on this device. And so those are some of the companies or the companies that have participated in, um, in the uh, Core 5 MCU project. Along with the Core 5 MCU uh, development of the IP, we integrate that and on an FPGA platform. This is the Digilent uh, Nexus A7 FPGA board. That is available for, uh, for anyone to uh, install the IP on, the, on that board and to evaluate the uh, performance of the processor and use this board for software development. We've also integrated 
that uh, MCU project together with um, with an IoT capability. So uh, using the um, uh, a link to the AWS IoT cloud um, and which is enabled by a, a module from a company called Espressive. Um, that is uh, enables really IoT prototyping, and that that really gets to the heart of you know what what some of the embedded processor that we're developing are are used for. So um, this is a very exciting uh, uh, integration project for us, and it's coming together very nicely. So that I thought that was a good example project to explain to um, potentially interested companies in in uh, Asia. Uh, how they might be able to take advantage of the um, open hardware IP that's being developed. So, uh, from open hardware group's perspective, you'll you'll hear more again from the core on the core's roadmap uh, and software and verification approach. But just some big picture items: we we do expect the ecosystem to continue to grow. Uh, we're we're uh, expecting at least 100 members and partners by the end of this year. Um, and so we, we get new members every month. We have new uh, core projects that are being uh, that will augment our existing projects, and you'll you'll see uh, those full set of core projects in the in Davide's presentation. We have new projects being proposed in in areas such as system on chip interconnect um, and uh, fabrics and and buses uh, that that will enable some of the cores to be integrated together uh, effectively in a multi-processor configuration. And also together with accelerators and, uh, and other components in a heterogeneous cl cluster. And as well as, well as that, we're, we're looking at uh, making use of the EFPGA technology within uh, the system on chips that we're gonna continue to develop. So with that, that was an overview of the uh, open hardware group itself. I wanna talk about the Asia Working Group and that is a, a joint initiative of Open Harvard Group together with the Eclipse Foundation. It's actually formed under the Eclipse Foundation working group process. So if you're familiar with Eclipse projects, you'll, you'll be quite familiar with this working group. So it's structured uh, under Belgian law, actually. Um, so, but effectively Open Hardware Asia will form or is forming a, um, a, a working group just like our technical working group and our marketing, work, marketing working group. So we're really excited to have kicked that off with some key member companies. So the Chinese Academy of Science, both the Institute of Computing Technology and Institute of Software, uh, Alibaba, Futureway, NXP. And this is just an initial set of companies. Uh, we do expect the, the um, additional um, companies from within Open Hardware Group to, to join AWG and participate in the projects. Um, the steering committee is listed their way, I believe, introduced the steering committee in Chinese, and you'll hear more from some of these, uh, some of these uh, people in, uh, later in the broadcast. Our objectives are really to focus on Asian requirements and make sure that the open hardware group roadmap reflects the needs of companies in uh, countries like China and other Asian countries uh, for an open hardware processor ecosystem. Um, we'll not only look at the roadmap, but hopefully uh, spawn specific projects uh, to create new open source IP based on the analysis that, that we're doing in AWG. Uh, we're also like to make sure that our data governance is in line with expectations from regional countries. And one of the most important things I think is to partner with uh, Asian Risk V or open hardware focused organizations. Um, we have various work streams and, and Shu Khan will, will explain these in more detail in his presentation. So, uh, but we're going to look at roadmaps in all of these areas and to look at aligning the open hardware group uh, roadmap with, with this work from the AWG. So um, certainly participation in any of these areas is very open to any AW, AWG company. And how do you get to be an AWG company? You really just need to join Open Hardware uh, Group, and the, along with joining Open Hardware Group, you will get an Eclipse Foundation membership. So, keeping in mind 
This is a joint organization between Open Hardware and Eclipse Foundation. Just, uh, it's, it's quite simple. Just uh, all the Open Hardware members effectively can, can join AWG. There's no additional fees or, or documents that are required. So I hope uh, some of you uh, may be interested in, in getting involved in either Open Hardware Group uh, or, or both Open Hardware Group and AWG. Um, so to follow up, before we turn it over to the uh, subsequent presentations, there are some uh, contact details. This is my uh, QR code for uh, WeChat. You'd be welcome to, uh, to, uh, to scan that if, if you'd like to. Um, and if not, you can just go to the, uh, the Open Hardware website and you'll find information about how to contact us, including this email address, info at Open Hardware Group or call, contact me on my email address. So th thank you for your uh, present, for your uh, attention. I'm going to turn it over now to um, some recorded presentations we have from uh, the, as you saw on the agenda. And the first one is, is uh, Shu Kan from the uh, AWG steering committee. And he's going to tell you in Chinese about why that's important. So thank you for your attention. 大家好，欢迎大家来到今天的这个研讨会。我们今天呢，有很多的内容，也希望大家能想收今天的带来的这些各种各样的内容。那么接下来呢，由我来给大家介绍一下开源硬件组织亚洲工作组的主要的工作和
联合倡议所组建的一个工作组。那么我们专门专注于两点，第一点呢就是整个亚洲的生态。然后，特别是对于这种开源处理器和硬件以及相关的软件的这些要求和定义。然后，第二个呢，就是在数据资产管理中反映亚洲包括中国对数字主权的这些要求。那么，同样的和 Open Hardware 一样，我们 Open Hardware AWG 也有很多家的这种优秀的企业和高校参与进来，比如说阿里巴巴、FutureWay， 还有我们的计算所、软件所，还有恩智浦等等。那么再具体说一下我们这个亚开源硬件亚洲工作组的主要工作啊，主要有三点。第一个呢，就是和亚洲的 RIS5 组织建立合作的伙伴关系，推动对话，共同定义亚洲生态系统所需要的这些芯片的 IP 啊、软件，还有硬件，以及构成它的整个生态系统所需要的开源路线图。第二个呢，就是。收集整理以亚洲为中心的这些需求，以及这些开源开放生态系统的这些战略和技术的需求，并且在整个的 Open h a r d w a r e Group 的里面去孵化这些讨论出来的这些项目。第三呢，就是和我们的所有的合作伙伴取得联系，并且一起合作来进行一个长久的发展。好，接下来我给想给大家介绍一下我们的这个开源硬件的这个亚洲工作组都有哪些小组，以及我们都有哪些具体的分工。从整体上来看啊，我们的这个 Open Hardware AWG 开源硬件亚洲工作组呢，主要分为以下几个具体的小组。那每一个小组呢，其实是看某一个具体的方向。比如说，我们有处理器组，那么处理器组就是专门去看跟处理器相关的方向。那么除此之外呢？还有加速器组，还有软件任务组，还有接口 IP 任务组，还有设计与验证任务组，还有基准测试组。那么最后也是非常重要的，也是营销和生态的这个工作组。那么接下来呢，我们就一个一个的去看他们每一个工作组的一些主要的工作的重点和领域究竟有哪些。首先，我们来看看处理器组啊，这里写的是和 RIS5 相关。那么，我们其实整个开源硬件的整个的组织，其实关注的更多的是在 RIS5 方面。那么，具体到我们亚洲工作组呢，我们整个的处理器组其实的工作的目的，就是为开源处理器去开发这个相关的特性。或者是这个定义相关的功能路线图，同时呢，我们也会为整个处理器啊、呃、本身啊去进行这个开源 IP 的定义和设计和开发。比如说，这个 Open Hardware 整个的开源硬件的组织里面就有这个代表性的 Core Five 系列的 RIS Five 的处理器啊，这些都是这个处理器组所关注的重点。所以呢，如果你对 RIS5 处理器，特别是这种开源开放处理器啊，非常有感，非常感兴趣。那么也欢迎大家去积极的参与我们处理器组的相关的工作。那么我本人呢，也是在这个处理器组来负责相关的这种技术路线和开发特性的一些工作。那么也欢迎大家去联系我。那么第二点也是非常重要的是这个加速器组。加速器组的主要目的啊，就是为开源处理器。去构建针对浮典型，包括这个向量等等类型的不同种类的加速器，然后呢，通过软件和接口的调用，对加速器的各种操作呢，去进行这个使用加速器，去对各种操作进行加速。然后同时呢，我们还会提供标准的加速接口啊，比如说整个开源硬件组织会已经提出了一种名叫 CVX interface 的一种标准的加速器接口，这样呢就方便大家。呃，设计的各种加速器能够通过这样标准接口连接到我们的处理器上，所以这个加速器也是整个开源硬件中非常重要的一部分。因为除了处理器之外，肯定还需要这些领域专用的，或者是针对你的应用而专门设计的这些重要的加速器的模块。同时，还有对应的软件和接口，这些呢都是加速器组所关注的重点。那么第三个部分呢，就是我们的软件任务组啊，软件任务组顾名思义就是为整个的这个开源硬件亚洲工作组内开发的各种的内核，还有这个 IP 去进行定义开发，呃，相关的，并且去支持相关的软件工具链啊、操作系统端口啊，还有这种固件等等，所有和我们前面说的
呃加速器或者是处理器相关的软件资源，嗯、我们其实都是在我们的软件任务组里头去进行的。那么除了前面三个，还有剩下非常重要的四个这个小组啊。那么接首先就是这个接口和 IP 的这个任务小组。那么接口和 IP 任务小组呢，主要是为我们整个工作组开发的这些内核和 IP 去定义、开发和支持基于 SC 和 FPGA 的这种评估和开发的平台。比如说现在的开源硬件，其实已经有了基于这种 Core Five 的 MCU。然后包括我们这个 Core Five 的整个的这个 r i s Five， 呃，内核其实也已经在 FPGA 平台上得到了这种验证和实现。所以这个所有和内核相关的外围的接口，包括 IP， 包括 MCU， 包括 SOC， 整整等等整个系统方向的这种工作，都可以在这个接口和 IP 任务组中找到。接下来呢，就是设计和验证任务组啊，这个就是我们英文说的 design and verification DV 组。那么它的主要工作的目的啊，就是为组内开发的这些内核和 IP 去开发这种行业一流的工业级的基于 UVM 的验证和测试的环境啊。这个可能接下来我们或者是已经有老师介绍过了，这个我们已经有这种 Core Five 的 Core Five Verif 的这种验证的 U G U V M 的这种验证平台啊。这个其实也是我们把和工业界已经在广泛使用的验证的方法学用在开源硬件上，特别是那个我们的 S O C C P U， 包括这个 C P U 内核的这种开发和设计和验证上，然后能够极大的减少大家从头搭建整个验证平台的这些这个额外的工作量，而是大家可以用统一的验证平台、统一的验证环境。去验证自己的设计，这个也是非常重要的人，也是我个人呃非常关注的一个重点。那么我们比较有特色的一个工作组啊，就是基准测试组。那么顾名思义，它就是为组内的处理器的这种各种的评测，去构建一套面向多个领域、多个应用，并且在多个维度的指标体系下的这种完整的评估套件，那我们叫做 Bench CPU。它能够去支持通用的处理器的性能和功耗等等这些性能指标的评测，以及去面向应用场景的处理器评测。所以它的主要的意义就是说，我们大家去设计出来不同的 CPU， 或者是不同的加速器，或者是不同的平台。但是呢，我们可以提供一个统一的衡量的维度和评测的标准，也就是用我们的这种基准测试的方法。然后去统一客观的去衡量各种呃处理器，包括 S O C 的性能和这个功耗等等这些性能指标。那么最后也是同样非常重要的，就是我们的影像生态工作组，它主要的目的其实就是推动我们整个开源硬件组织和其他组织的各种的合作，然后去建立合作的关系啊，包括这个推广啊、培训啊，包括我们的研究计划。以及整体的成员的不断的这个增长，来然后来创造整个的我们的这个亚洲工作组的生态系统，包括全球的生态系统，啊，这个也是对我们的整体工作有非常大的这个意义。好了，以上就是我今天想跟大家分享的主要内容，希望能够对大家有所帮助，也欢迎大家呃和我们联系啊，可以给我们发邮件。如果你对我们前面说的那几个工作，呃，和工作组非常感兴趣，也可以，也欢迎大家随时的联系我们。那么接下来呢，就是我们的 David 啊老师来给我们大家介绍 Open Hardware 的各种的路线图以及之后的发展的路线。Okay, thanks a lot, Khan.、Uh, now allow me to introduce you the Core Five Core Roadmap. I'm David Schiavone, Director of Engineering of Open Hardware Group, and I'm happy to present you our main APs. So here in this slide, you see、um, the high-level view of what are the CPUs that we're building, wh when they start、uh, working on the projects, when are we ending on these projects, and with colors you also see、um, the status of the projects that we are running on. You also see how the embedded sites、so、at the bottom of the slide is populated by、um, many APs actually and projects and.、Um, A part is the one focusing on the application CPUs. But let me start by describing you the the history of these CPUs. 
So we started from the Risky and, and the Ariane core, the RIS5 CPUs donated by ETH Zurich. And the first stuff we have done within the Open Hardware Group after um, receiving uh, this donation was writing documentation for the CPUs, reworking the structure of the repository, and even more importantly, working on industrial grade verification for those IPs such that a member of the Open Hardware Group, but in general, everyone can use these CPUs for, for real products. And Mike will uh, describe this process more into details later. Another thing we worked on is the name of the CPUs. So we, we defined a part number syntax for each of the CPU. And here you see that every core has a family name, which is core five, the word length, the class, which can be application or embedded, the identity, which is usually the number of pipeline stages and the version number, and a modifier, which is basically a, a character that helps us understanding what is the core. And here P stands for PAV, for example. Duncan already described our uh, project framework within the Open Hardware Group. Uh, here, I just want to mention that every P and, um, is developed by projects, and every project follows a given gate chain, and each project in time is um, in one of those four stages, with the last one being project freeze. Not every project targets the same technology readiness level, which is TRL here in this slide. We have uh, several levels defined by NASA and uh, also uh, adopted by the European Commission and Open Art Group as well. And we start with the idea being the TRL zero all the way to five, which is technology readiness level five means it has been tested, verified, and we can build products based on this IP. You can also have six and seven, which is we taped it out, we put it on field, we have prototypes, systems based on those Whereas the open hardware group adopters and members will actually focus on the production part. So let me start describing the embedded class CPUs. So the first one is the already mentioned CV3240P. It is the first project achieving project freeze, and uh, we achieve it by uh, verifying the core up to TRL5. So you can build product based on the CV3240P. The first project actually focused on verifying instruction set extensions from RIS-5, I, M, and C, so integer multiplication and compressed. And we did it with step, step and compare simulation and then using the Imperial as a reference model. We verified interrupts, we verified debug, but the core is more than this. The core is, has also custom extensions um, named uh, pulp, pulp extensions, and also uh, RIS-5 floating point extensions. We also have uh, the Core 5 MCU, which is a microcontroller um, that will host the verified uh, CV3240P. It's a fully fledged microcontroller with an FPGA macro uh, from QuickLogic, a full set of peripherals, DMM, PLLs, and memory. We are taping it out in uh, 22 nanometers in the second half of this year. And we also have available uh, Xilinx Genesis 2 and uh, Nexus uh, bit streams for demo and software developments. The next project concerning the same IP is the V2, which will be focusing on uh, complete the verification of the missing instruction set extensions that were left out from the previous project, which are the pulp extensions, which are in the custom space, where also the compiler will be extended and the um, standard floating point extensions. To be sure that the, the next uh, activities around the CPU, uh, like the one concerning the V2 project, won't break the verification done in the V1 project, we also set up a pipeline that is checking the sanity of the CPU. And this is not done with heavy and time-consuming uh, verification simulation-based continuous integration checks, but we, we use uh, uh, the formally equivalent checks uh, named logical equivalence checking. And we are doing this by uh, using GitHub Actions. So basically every contribution to the core in, on GitHub will be checked, will be first approved by staff. And if the staff approves that, 
then a GitHub action will trigger on the Amazon server um, the EDA uh, commercial tools that will check whether the new RTL that has been submitted with the new commit is actually logically equivalent to the core. We are um, doing this uh, by respecting some, some rules, uh, namely the ones that are shown in this slide. Every parameter that has been previously verified, for example, in the V1 project, the pulp extensions and, and FPU are not actually verified. But for example, we verify the interrupts, debug, and multiplications, and so on. So every change that uh, changes the, the logical equivalence of those parameters, of those extensions, are actually not accepted unless they are bugs. Every changes in the non-verified uh, part of the CPU, like uh, floating points, pulp, are accepted. And with, by, by doing this, we are sure that the previous project is never be, being broken by new, new actually features. Even though some of those features may be interesting, like power optimizations, but we want to keep the development of the of IP stable, and we don't want to keep it in continuous development and change, such that software can rely on it, and the verification strategy can rely on it. Next to this IP, which I just presented, we also have one still in the embedded class, which is specialized on security. So we have the E4TS, which is um, a still a fourth stage in order single issue core, but this is as custom extensions around security. Um, for, uh, for example, against side channel attacks and so on. It has also the user mode for, to protect user code from the machine code, PMP, PMA, and bus error checks. And then we also have the TV32E40X. This one, instead of security, is actually focused on computational density application. So this CPU can be extended with a, with a custom interface, which is called CVX interface, defined by Open Other Group, which we, I will describe it later. But the idea is that the CPU is actually compliant with this interface and can be extended without knowing anything about the extension. So the extension doesn't need to be pushed within the same GitHub repository where the CPU relies in, because the decoding of those extensions is actually kept separated and handled by the CVX interface and coprocessors. A continuation of the first core I presented is also the CV32E41P, so the next version of the E40P. Th this effort is driven by Huawei and is actually focusing on a proof of concept design for complex extensions and uh, ZFNX extensions, which are basically the sharing between the integer and the floating point register file. Those are RIS5 uh, spe um, draft specification where Huawei is working with. And as a part of the uh, ratification um, process, we also want such implementations being implemented on real hardware. And this CPU is actually an IP that implements first these extensions that can be then be available to everyone. To conclude the embedded class family, we also have the CV32E20. This is only two stage single issue core, and it's meant to replace all those uh, final state machines that only control uh, the MCUs without being computationally intensive uh, optimized. So this is a low cost, uh, low leakage power uh, CPU. Now let's move to the application class core. An application class core is a CPU that is capable of running Linux and is capable of managing uh, memory with uh, memory management units. We, we, the first application class CPU is uh, the formerly known Ariane core, now called CVA6 as a six-stage architecture. It uses AXI to have high performance on memory transactions. It has caches. The first version of this was the one developed by ETH Zurich in its 64-bit uh, flavor. And then within the Open Hardware Group, we also extended the CPU to be compliant with the 32-bit flavor, so for a version of it with a lower area overhead. Still in the application family, we also have the CV32A5. This targets specifically FPGA platform, so it's a soft core, 
whereas all the previous ones are optimized uh, for ASIC targets. And uh, it has five stages instead of six, but also MMU and uh, privilege support. So we're not only building uh, cores. As I mentioned before, we're also building facts within the core task group of uh, Open Hardware Group. The most important one is, that I mentioned so far is, is probably the CVXIF, which in detail is a bus specification that al allows a CPU to offload to a coprocessor but um, through this bus, every legal instruction. So the CPU fetches an instruction, it recognizes that it's illegal, and it sends the instruction and register operands to the X interface. On the other side of the X interface, there is a coprocessor, with separate files with separate decoder that implements the other side of the bus that receive instructions from the, the, the master CPU, decode it, execute them, and give back the results. Uh, this bus is especially interesting because it allows um, to keep separated the RTL repository and, um, and, uh, the, and the world code base between the coprocessor and the CPU. So what you will end up with is having the option of having the CPU being maintained by Open Arduino Group, completely open source with permissive license as the E4TX, and then a co-closed source, for example, internal coprocessor that implements custom extensions without the uh, open source repository being aware. So being it's agnostic, it's agnostic to the custom extensions. You can actually also use it to implement standard extensions and but still keeping the code separated. Next to the uh, CPUs, we are also building uh, coprocessor and logic blocks. The mo most used are the FPUs. This FPU can be tightly integrated in the CVA6 and CV32 E40P core, but can also be used experimentally with the X interface. And this supports with parameters, both 32 floating point and all the way to 64 uh, double precision um, extensions. Then we also have CVVAC. This is a coprocessor for CVA6, so meant for application class. Uh, CPUs that implements the mm -hmm. version uh, 1.0 of the RISC-V vector extensions. Thanks a lot for listening. So this is a call for uh, asking you to help us be uh, growing the ecosystem further. Please join, join us in existing projects to increase their quality, meeting the market earlier, and also build a network with other stakeholders that share the interest with you, and also to contribute new projects. So for example, for contribute new out-of-order CPUs, or they're actually the key uh, member uh, maintaining that uh, multi-core system, cache sub system, new coprocessor, software libraries, and so on, working on the most writing application for our APs, and so on. Now I want to conclude and leave to Mike the stage. Uh, he will talk about verification. And if you have any further questions, please contact me by email or Mattermost or anything else. Thanks a lot. Well, thanks for that introduction, Davide. Uh, my name is Michael Thompson. I am the Director of Engineering here at the Verification Task Group in, in the Open Hardware Group. And I'm very excited to be here today uh, presenting to you. I have worked with uh, Chinese semiconductor companies for many, many years, and I'm looking forward to the opportunity to work with the Asian Working Group again, and uh, hopefully work with all of you for many, many years. I'll be talking a little bit today about uh, something called Core5 Verif, which is the verification platform that we use to verify our cores. This isn't the only thing going on in verification at Open Harvard Group, but it is the primary activity. So we should probably go over that with all of you. Uh, just by a brief introduction, these slides are adopted from a set of presentations that are designed to provide an overview uh, of the Core5 Verif uh, test benches, these presentations are all open source documents and are available on various platforms. If you are interested uh, to learn more, please reach out and we can, uh, we can uh, uh, set you up with uh, either links or direct access to, to the files. The goal of this specific presentation is to introduce new teams that are interested in our verification efforts, specifically verification efforts on, on Core 5 cores. I get asked this question a lot, what is Core 5 Verif? Really, it's a GitHub repository. 
It's a GitHub repository, mostly of verification uh, uh, source files. Uh, it's the central location for all of the Open Hardware Group's family of Core 5, uh, core five cores uh, test benches. Um, it provides a common infrastructure and methodology for complete industrial grade verification. You'll hear me use that term a lot. Uh, it's implemented in System Verilog using the Universal Verification Methodology or UVM. And it provides a common framework for really everything we do in verification. The design verification plans, the test bench implementation, and also the scripts and the make files for running the tests, looking at uh, coverage, looking at regression results, all of those things. Uh, currently, we're supporting a lot of cores. We have uh, several Core 5 cores in active development, uh, starting with our most famous, the CV32E40P, both uh, version 1 and version 2 uh, iterations of that, of that core, the CV32E40X, E40S are currently under development. CVA6 is an application uh, uh, size core capable of running Linux. That is an active development today, active verification within Core 5 Verif. And coming soon, we will have the CV32E20. I want to take everybody back to a, to a little bit of history. This goes back more than two and a half years to our starting point. Uh, the starting point for Core 5 Verif was the Risky Core and something called the Core Test Bench for Risky. We inherited this from ETH Zurich, the, the Pulp Platform team at ETH. They developed Risky, the Pulp Platform uh, SOC, uh, Ariane, a number of very famous Risk 5 cores. This, uh, this graphic below is really the entirety of the test bench that was used for, for Risky. And the information flow starts at the left-hand side, goes to the right. Start off with a test program. This is either uh, in, in assembly or in C, and it's typically written by hand, uh, maybe hello world, something like this. This is compiled with a RISC-V tool chain to produce a machine code file, uh, sometimes called a hex file in system Verilog. This is loaded into a memory model in the system Verilog test bench. And then the RTL model of the core starts to execute that program. And as it executes the program, it produces a trace log. Um, and, this, and this literally was our starting point. Just for some uh, comparison's sake, I wanna talk a little bit about a typical RISC-V test bench. Um, your typical RISC-V test bench will look a lot like this. Uh, it's, it's very similar to the core test bench that uh, we inherited from ETH Zurich. Uh, there's really two primary components to it. The first is a Verilog test bench, which is really the same as we had before. Uh, the second is the spike model, which is acting as a reference. Both the Verilog test bench and the spike model execute the same program. So we take the same program we had before, C program or assembly program, run it through the tool chain to produce the machine code in a hex file format. This is executed first by the uh, R RTL in the RTL's test bench, then by the spike model in the spike environment. These uh, runs both produce tracer logs, and then we have some comparison functions, probably a Python script or a Perl script, or maybe something uh, uh, along those lines that compares the tracer logs to make sure that the two, the two cores, the risky core and the spike core did the same thing to, with the same program. The core five ver strategy is significantly different than this. Um, the typical uh, risk five test bench has a number of uh, deficiencies that really make it difficult to complete an industrial grade verification and we needed to address those. First of all, it's a two-step process. So you've got the simulation running on the RTL simulator, and then you've got essentially the same program that runs on the spike reference model. Um, so now you've got two log files, two trace files, you need to compare those. Um, they're not compared as they run. Um, so you need separate tools for running the RTL, running the reference model, and the comparison scripts. Um, in this environment, it's difficult to test asynchronous events such as interrupts and debug. And really, interrupts and debug are, you know, a lot of interesting corner cases in simulation come from verifying those features. Um, and so a, a test bench where that's difficult to verify is a problem. Um, 
And last but not least, you need to maintain consistency between the test program, the tool chain, the test bench, and the comparison scripts. They all have to have a, uh, a common configuration and dependencies between these uh, environments need to be resolved every time you run a test. Uh, so what we've done in Corify Verif to, to address each and every one of these uh, aspects is to create a unified uh, simulation environment. So there's one simulation only with on-the-fly comparison between the RTL and the reference. So the reference model and the RTL model are executing the same code at the same time in the same simulation. Um, we have built-in support for managing the consistency. This is a lot easier because everything's being done in one simulation. And doing it all in one simulation allows us to, to uh, have built-in support for functional coverage and code coverage. So we have all, all of the code coverage and functional coverage capability of a system barrel and simulator all comes together in our environment. So what does it look like? So this is what Core 5 Verif looks like today, or as of uh, about three months ago, it is a constantly evolving environment. The other thing you'll notice about this, uh, this environment is that the RTL and the reference model run in the same UVM test bench at the same time. This is important because they're, they're running the same program. They're also exposed to the same debug requests and the same interrupt uh, uh, events in real time. And as each instruction is executed, the results of the trace log um, are, are compared. So you get an error indication or a pass indication at the end of every instruction retirement. Uh, we also have extensive functional coverage, system barrel log assertions, all the things that you'd expect in a typical system barrel log UVM environment. We're not stopping there. Uh, we, have, we have the goal to basically unify everything under the UVM and ultimately eliminate the tool chain. Um, this may sound counterintuitive, eliminating the tool chain, but being dependent on the tool chain means that we absolutely have a whole bunch of dependencies that have nothing to do with RTL verification and everything to do with software tools. Being independent of that, being able to generate programs directly in machine code will greatly simplify uh, the work that we're doing to, to verify the core. Uh, so this is this is an aspect that we're working on. We're also working on uh, with our partner uh, in Paris to create a unified API to access the reference model, and that will make uh, introducing new cores and new reference models a great deal easier. A question I get asked a lot is: Is this re really necessary? I mean, after all, uh, if we if we look at the uh, the first core that we did, the CV thirty two E forty P, this was inherited from a program at the Pulp Platform uh, team at ETH Zurich called Risky. Um, this was this is a high quality core that was developed by the team at ETH Zurich, and it had been in silicon at least twice before it became the Open Hardware Group's CV32E40P. So why did we do all this stuff? And what did we do? Well, we did a lot. Um, first of all, we created complete and comprehensive user manuals. Uh, and these are open source artifacts available on Read the Docs today. We restructured the RTL uh, to simplify the parameterization, um, executed the complete end-to-end -end verification using both uh, simulation verification on Core 5 Verif and also formal verification. So once again, this comes with uh, DV plans, test benches, test cases, and code results. All of these are open source uh, artifacts that you can readily see on GitHub today. So what were the results? Uh, well, we found 47 bugs. Everybody always wants to know about how many bugs you find. Uh, we found 47 bugs. And some people have said that that's a high number of bugs. Some people have said that that's a low number of bugs. Um, I think it's an amazing result. Uh, when you think about uh, the quality of the team at ETH Zurich and the quality of the, of the designs that they put out and the fact that they went to silicon twice, um, to only find 47 bugs uh, in, in that IP is a, a remarkable testament to the, uh, the technical skill of the team at ETH Zurich. Um, but it also highlights the difference between an academic project and an industrial project. In an academic project, 47 bugs is probably not a problem, but in an industrial setting, 47 bugs is, is a disaster. So, you know, I'm, I'm quite proud of the work that the open hardware team did. Uh, we found these 47 bugs and they've all been, they've all been fixed. 
Uh, and this IP is of the uh, same or similar quality to anything that you could buy from any industrial uh, EDA company. Uh, an interesting thing for me is, is basically the type of bugs found and how the bugs were found. Um, the interesting thing on how the bugs were found is there was uh, almost, almost exactly equal measure of bugs found in simulation was Core 5 Verif. In formal verification, uh, which we, which I introduced earlier, but we're not talking about too much today. And with uh, human inspection, just people looking at the code, reviewing the code, trying to understand how it operated. And we found bugs using all three techniques and we found an equal number of bugs using those techniques. So this reinforces the idea that in verification, it's very important to use multiple techniques to get to the goal of bug-free silicon. Uh, the types of bugs that we found, as you'd expect, were predominantly RTL functional bugs. And that's what the, the chart on the right-hand side shows. Um, you know, something like 80% of the bugs we found were functional bugs. There were a lot of coding style bugs that we fixed, uh, some RTL non-functional bugs that just, you know, made things easier to synthesize. Uh, and of course, a couple that were un uh, simply unreproducible or invalid. Just to wrap up, I want to talk about uh, the documentation for, uh, uh, for Core 5 Verif. Uh, this is captured in a document that we call the Verification Strategy. It is also available on Read the Docs. Uh, this is, once again, an open source artifact. Uh, if, you go, if you Google Open Hardware Group Core 5 Verif Verification Strategy, uh, you, will, you will certainly find this link. Uh, there's also a link to this document at the top of the README in Core 5 Verif on GitHub. Um, if you go there and take a look at the verification strategy, I would recommend you start with the quick start guide. This is a intended to be a, a guide to get you up and running a simulation on Core 5 Verif as quickly as possible. The result of that uh, reading that will allow you to execute Hello World on the CV32E40P. There's also a lot of discussion about the actual implementation, which we didn't get into in this, uh, in, in this presentation. Uh, the, the starting point for that is also in the Quick Start Guide. Look at the CV32E40P directory tree. This will give you a very solid idea of how we've organized uh, Core 5 Verif and how things are put together and how you can integ integrate your core into Core 5 Verif. With that, I want to thank you for your uh, time uh, this morning. And uh, Shishini, I hope to be working uh, with you again real soon. 好,非常感谢Mike, David, Duncan和石凯老师的演讲。那接下来是今天的最后一个报告。我们现在,呃,那么在报告之前呢,呃,要,呃,提醒一下各位,就是如果是大家是通过Zoom,呃,Webinar来参会的话,那么这个屏幕
软件，包括 GCC 啊，包括 g v c l i p s 的 IDE 插件。包括呃实时系统有个 Free Atos， 然后 H A L 这个后面会介绍，那主要这个主要是云海在例的，那么以及以及目前正在形成的一个 M M C U S D K 这方面，那么呃整所有的软件工作组所有的工作，包括开会啊，包括这个软件都是开源的，那么非常欢迎大家去 Open 呃 GitHub 的 Open H W Group 上去看一下相关的工作，那么呃我们先那么。第一个问题是说，为什么我们 Open H W Group 要去做一个，要专门有一个软件工作组来做相关的事情？那么首先就要看到我们，呃，这个是，呃，来自之前，呃，这个介绍的页面当中有一个，呃，从这里面，从这个路线图上可以看到 ，Open H W 虽然成立，呃，时间比较还比较年轻，但是已经有多款啊、呃、开源的 C P U 和，而且是不同的，呃，不同的能力，不同的流水线等级，呃，在。同时在进行推进，那么在这个基础上啊，为什么要维护一套特定的软件站就比较容易理解了。那么可以看一下，我们目前是在呃有嵌入级的 MCU， 然后有应用级的 C C V A 六。那么在不同的处理器盒上是有不同的指令集扩展的。那么不同的扩展的话，是需要有一套完整的软件站来进行支持的啊、呃。例如目前的像 C V 呃四零系列 E 四零系列。就包括了一个 X 啊、uh, ，Prompt 和 Z Things 和 Z C E 相关的支持。那这些支持呢，有一些是在2021年之前啊、呃、的自定义指令集，有一些呢，像 Z Things 呢，是逐渐的已经推，已经通过 Race Five 国际基金会啊、呃，在尝试进行标准化的一些指令。那么，所以在，所以从啊、呃，不仅是从开始的时候会设计上会有一些自定义的指令集扩展。那么，随着整个 Race Five 生生态社区的呃。这个指令集的指令集的新的指令集的提出和标准化，那么我们维护的开源和也会不断的去引用和和实现新的扩展指令，这就需要我们的软件站上能够及时的进行跟进。那么，呃，本次活动呢，我们主要简单介绍一下以下的部分。那么会简单介绍一下为什么需要有编译器啊，需要有这个 RTOS 啊，需要有 ID 这样的工作。那么这页 PPT 当中右边的部分呢，是我从呃、嗯，是是我从呃 Frederick 从的报告当中直接截取出来的。那么，即使是一个简单的开发环境的话，我们也可以把它分成两部分。啊，一部分是在大家的本机上进行的开发的。那么，这本机上呢，首先很直观的理解说，在本机上得有一个交叉编译的工具链环境。那么，这个环境呢，一般我们称之为 SDK。那么 ，SDK 里面最好是一般来说都会希望说有一个啊集成开发环境，有一个图形界面。那么。目前嵌入式的话，主要是基于 Eclipse 或 Platform IO 这两个平台来进行。那么嵌入式这方面呢，需要在这个嵌入式的呃 MCU 或对应的这个呃 Kit 开发版嘛，现在成为现在呃成为 Dev Kit 上。那么是需要它运行有有一些固件，然后运行一个小的操作系统。呃，操这个操作系统上面呢，再运行一些小的呃具体的应用。那么大体上是这样的一个过程。那么为了调试，为了为了去去烧写和调试这个固件呢，又需要一系列的协议，呃，和一系列的烧写设备。那么这样的话就，就、呃、啊，即使是一个非常小的 MCU 盒，那么也有一个非常复杂和完整的软件站需要去支持和适配。那么通过这张图，大家对啊、呃、整个工具链会有一个简单直观了解。那么当我们说我们去修改 GCC 或者对啊编译器进行优化的时候，我们在做什么呢？那首先要做的呢，其实是。呃，编译器呢有工具链又分成几个不同的部分，那么其中最简最最呃基础的部分实际上是汇编器和反汇编器，呃以及二进制工以及 b i n u t i l s 十二进制工具，我们需要把一个手写的汇编啊、呃、通过注记符的形式转换成二进制，那么这个二进制之后呢，又要通过把它进行打包，通过 b i n u t i l s 这样的方式把它变成呃机器可以直接可以读取和执行的一个二进制的文件格式，那么。在这个过程当中，我们有可能需要返回编，需要调试，那么就会有一系列的工作。那么我们希望从高级像 C 语言编 C 语言编译成啊汇编的注记符的时候，就需要有 compiler。这个在这个在 GCC 当中默认是 CCE 这样的形式。那么在做的时候呢，需要调用一些函数库，那么所以就会有 compiler libraries。那么这些工作呢，目前是呃基基础的知识都已经完成，而且在扩展指令上都已经都已经啊、呃、有所实现。那么这个工作呢，相对来说是一个比较呃非常的专门和
呃比较专专门的工作。那么不仅是 GCC 也好，还是 LLVM 也好，现在的代码的规模都是非常大的，都已经是一个千万级的规模。那么呃，目前实现的啊、呃，当然这里感谢呃 e b i c o s m 的 j e n Bennett 和 Jessica 啊、呃、等提供的这个 PPT 的素材。那么目前的 Core Five 的工具链当中已经支持了。啊 ，Core Five 当中使用的一系列的指指令扩展，那么包括像硬件的循环啊，包括像 MIC 指令啊，包括像这些呃陈家这样的简单指令。那这里其实是需要呃，就是说，就在2022年需要额外说明一下，就是呃，大家在看这个指令的时候有，有可能觉得有些是很相似跟呃跟 r e s p i v e 基金会啊，抱歉，我刚才的这个网络突然间呃出现了一点故障。那么我们从刚才。呃，断的地方直接开始。那么我们在这里要进行说明一下，就是呃，大家看到这些指令的时候，可能会感觉好像跟其他的一些扩展，比如说像 r e s p i v e 基金会当中的呃，正在推的一个 Bit Manip 相关的 ZB 呃开头的一些扩展相似。这个其实是有一些时间呃历史发展路径的关系。其实我们是整个 r e s p i v e 社区是在一个不断的发展，然后呃积累群体积累一些公共的呃知识这样的过程当中的。那么一开始的时候，我们在呃 ，OpenHW 相关的核其实是开发实际上是很早的。我们在二零呃一六到一八年的时候，其实就有一些核的雏形。那么在这个时候的时候，其实呃已经做了一些尝试。那么这些尝试呢，后面这些呃进行硬件实验，包括这个性能上的一些分析，慢慢积累整个行整个社区，慢慢积累出来一些经验，然后汇总成 r e s p i v e 新的指令集。所以大家看到有些重复呢，这个是这可能是理解为 r e s p i v e 社区的一个特色。那么呃也是。包括像我们的像 m s c 指令，那现在其实很多的扩展当中已经已经默认包含了。那么优化的一个例子，这里可以有一个直观的理解。那么，呃，举最简单的就是一个陈家。那么可以看这个图的左下角有一个 res 加等于 a 乘 b， 这是一个 C 语言的形式。那么简单来说，就是把 a 和 b 的乘积直接累加到啊 result 就 is 这样的一个结果上。那么为什么要对这个进行优化呢？这个其实是一个经验性的。我们从，呃，大量的代码当中，实际的商业代码和和开源代码当中，啊、呃，发现这个这这种语句就是 a 呃就是 c 等 c 等于 a 加 b 呃 a 乘 b 加 c 这样的形式非常多，所以我们把这种单独提出来，做成一个指令集的形式。那么通过这种指令形式，通过编译器，如果没有这个呃 x call。Call five 呃、uh, ，call v mac 的形式的话，那么它实际上是要拆分，会被编译成两条指令。那么两条指令呢，相对来说的话，那么它其实是可以被简化成一条指令，就通过 mac 的形式。那么当启用了这个 x call mac 之后，它有可能就直接能生成 cv 点 mac 这样一条指令的形式。那么我们直观上来说的话，就是两条指令肯定呃比一条指令的看起来的话，就是一条指令肯定更简洁，而且执行的速度和。能耗应该是更好的。那么，呃，同样的，就是这些所有的这些代码都是公开的，有些可能还没有呃 upstream 到 GCC 的上游，因为商因为它属于商业呃属于 vendor specific 的啊，但是呢，它是开源的，而且是有预预编译的二进制啊，同时大家也可以随时可以下载尝试。那么同时呢，呃，我们整个社区来说是非常欢迎啊、呃，大家包括尤其是尤尤其是。呃，工具链方面的话，就大家非常欢迎大家来一起来开发完善 Core Five、Core V 的工具链的。亚洲工作组这边呢，其实我们呃 PLCD 实验室作为软件所呃的一部分，已经在呃 Core Five 工具链当中进行了贡献。那么我们是从目前主要是在 Z f i n k s 和 Z C E， 那么这些这几个扩展当中来进行进行贡献啊，希望也早日能够啊、呃、代码能够合并到 Core V 的这个代码的源代码当中去。那么 LLVM 工具链这方面呢，相对来说的话是比 GCC 的支持要稍微晚一点点，但是现在已经是一个也是一个很好的状态啊。不仅是呃 c o v i d l l v m 工具链是能够很好的支持，那么同样在 LLVM 的上游，就是直接 Upstream， 现在对于 Respect 也有了一个很好的支持。那么呃，是非常欢迎大家去尝试使用的。当然，这个编译的大家编译的时候可能会有，如果有各种各样的问题，非非常欢迎大家来啊、呃、进行提问。那么例子下面这个 PPT 下面的例子其实是跟呃 GCC 当中例子一样，就是两条呃乘加指令变成两条乘和加的指令变成一条乘加指令。对，那么接下来的呃小的操作系统支持的话，那么目前 OpenHW 默认的情况下是支持了 FreeRDoS， 
啊 ，Free Alex 呢，嗯、呃，国内的呃小伙伴其实是比较熟悉的，因为国内其实有非常非常多的呃做嵌入式，尤其是、呃、做嵌入式以及做对操作系统啊、呃、这个技术比较啊、呃、熟悉的呃爱好者。那么实际上 ，Free Alex 是一个非常小精简的，呃，适用于嵌入式的操作系统。那么跟国内的 RT Thread 其实是非常类似的。那么可以看到，我们的 Free Al Free Al House 已经已经是一个很好的支持状态。那么整个呃相对来说也比较简洁。那么右边呢是整个我从前几天从啊 GitHub 上截下来的一个提交历史啊，相对来说是一个已经是一个很好的完成状态。那么基本上功能都有。如果大家发现 bug 的话，非常欢迎直接去提 issue。我们相信会有很就是会有会有很快就会有回应。那么 H L 部分相对来说的话，可能是一个啊、呃、比较有特色的地方。这个呢，其实也是从阿里巴巴拼多多呃提供的，目前是主要在承担它的开发和支持。那么简单来说，就是它的它的呃这个项目诞生的背景是呃我们 Open H W Group 已经有了很多，已经有了很多呃处理器的核啊，也分为成不同的系列。那么这里面呢，其实是有非常多的硬件的时间细节，需要操作系统去处理，需要去固件去处理的。那么在这种情况下，我们希望说能够能不能有一个呃抽象层，叫 hardware abstract 呃 abstraction layer， 能够能够抽象层把它抽象出来，这样能够简化我们上面的软件工作。那么这个呢就是 HL 的一个一个实现。那么呃我对这方面其实不太了解，它它呃其实同时需要有软件和硬件方面的支持。那我主要是软件方面的。呃如果大家这对在这个方面有问题，非非常欢迎在 QA 环节进行提问。然后我们希望呃我们正好能正好这个呃这个例。项目的例子也在啊，说不定能够给出更深入的、更深入的一些解答。那么 ID 方面其实是呃可视度，或者说大家一开始上手的时候最容易看到的。那这个呢，目前来说是呃没什么问题，基于 Eclipse 然后已经做。然后呃，但是如果大家真的上手的话呢，其实还是有一点挑战性的。呃，最简单、最最直接、直观来说呢，就是它的自动化程度其实还没有那么高，已经完成了很多所有的呃基本的支持。是有的，那包括像这个基础的调试功能、烧写功能，这些是都有的。然后不足的地方，目前是不足的地方，也是说，呃，希望大家能够来来支持的地方，主要是呃配置方面还是需要手工去配置的。那么真正的这个调试功能来说，还是有一部还是可以完善的啊。最重要是文档的部分呢，其实文档还是比较少，我们这里也是非常欢迎啊新的贡献者能够加入进行。那最后呢，时间关系，我们简单介绍 SDK。SDK 是一个刚刚起步的阶段，目前来说呢，还是啊、呃、处于一个就是一个开发的阶段。那么其实有非常大量的工作需要呃有志愿者投入人力来呃来做。那么所以这里面是主要，这里主要是列的一些需求和呃任务。那么非常欢迎呃今天来参会包包括后续看到录像的伙伴，如果看到这里面有自己感兴趣的技术领域啊、呃，非常欢迎联系我们，然后。能能够能够参与到这个开发当中来。好，时间关系的话，我们今天的报告就到这里，谢谢大家。那么接下来是 Q&A 的环节。好，我们现在有一个呃、uh, ，Hello Duncan， so 呃、uh, ，here comes the first question。So 呃、uh, ，if yeah， so the first question is that 呃、uh, ，if I'm not the member of the o p e n o p e n h w group， 呃、uh, ，can I use the open source projects that host by the open h w Yes, absolutely. Open hardware, every、uh, work product that we we produce is is fully open source. So you can、uh, find all of our work output on、uh, on GitHub.、Uh, so you're free to use any of the work products.、Uh, we use、uh, permissive licenses,、uh, Apache two point zero or Solder Pad or the Eclipse Foundation license. Um, and so you, you you can absolutely use the work as as is.、Uh, of course, you may get more value from participation in the working groups and to、uh, making your own contributions.、Uh, it will help your understanding and and to、uh, help the dialogue with the other collaborators in the ecosystem. But、uh, you're, you're absolutely free to use the the work as is. Yeah.、Um, So Wei, I guess I, I, I guess maybe I can ask some questions too that that、uh, we had collected beforehand,、um, and maybe we can involve the steering committee members. So、uh, one question I had, you know, maybe for、um, for Yunhai.、Um, so so can you kind of paint a, a big picture of how 
open source uh, RISC-V IP will, will be used in the, particularly with respect to the Chinese market. What are the important things for, um, uh, for, the, for that market? And are, are there gaps in, in what's available now in open source? Do you have any comments on that? Okay, uh, I, I will answer this question in Chinese. Yes, sure. Yeah, uh, RISC V in China has already a lot of use. And from the overall statistics, it has a very large increase in the overall growth. And from the current view, it has also been in the MCU and the other RPC areas. 都有已经慢慢都已经有，呃，相应的芯片做出来。然后整体的 r e s t f i 软件来看的话，其实它的 Tor Chain 还有底层的一些软件库也逐渐的成熟。包括其实我们阿里巴巴、拼多多这边提供的一些开发的一些套件、开发的一些工具啊，都是在，呃，不断的去帮 r e s t f i 生态变得更加完善。呃，所以说总体来看的话，其实从整个市场来看的话，现现在慢慢从。整个其他的 MCU， 就比如说，呃，其他友商的一些架构，还有一些五幺的架构，还有其他一些开源架构，其实慢慢很多厂商都是在往 r e s t f i 上面去不断的做牵引，呃，所以说其实，呃，从增增长趋势上来看的话，其实都有非常好的一个增长势头，对。呃、uh, ，maybe Wei， can you give a short translation into English of the answer? So. Yeah, so that the, the, the what we has said is that the actually the risk five has a very strong uh community in China. So so the, <laughs> yeah, kind of that. Yeah. Okay. Great. Actually, I see there was a question um that I can answer, which is uh what's the relation between uh open hardware and Eclipse Foundation? And do you need to be an Eclipse member? to be an open hardware, uh, to participate in open hardware development? The answer is basically when you join open hardware group, if you're not an Eclipse member already, you, you receive a, a free Eclipse Foundation membership. And that's, um, that's important for things like um, uh, uh, the uh, Eclipse uh, development process so that everybody is following the same open source, very rigorous development process that has been tested on uh, many open source projects worldwide, but uh, that's provided with your open hardware membership. Yeah, so, so I will do a short translation. So, uh, 简单来说的话，如果想要加入 OpenHW 的话呢，呃，是首先需要成为 Eclipse 的呃成员的。那么这个成员其实作为个人成员来说啊，其实是呃可以自由加入，然后实际上是不收取任何费用的。那么我们其实是在依托于 Open Eclipse 基金会的一些基础架构上啊，会有很多的，就是在这个基会呃共享了很多的基础基础架构上的支持。然后呃，接下来有个下一个问题是，怎样才能加入到 Open G W 的开发项目当中 ？So how to get involved into the、uh, projects? Uh, Open source projects in the open, which the open FW leads. So, uh, I think I will, I will, I will answer this in Chinese and and do、uh, some translation. So, 简单来说的话，加入 Open FW 的开发项目呢，啊、呃，跟大家想的不一样，有两种形式。那首先，这个 Open FW 所有的项目基本上都是开源的。我们会像 GCC 这样的项目，你有两种方式参与啊、呃。第一种的话是直接通过上游来参与。那么，像 GCC 的 Upstream 或者是 LLVM 的 Upstream 进行开发，进行代码贡献。那么我们其实整个 OpenGW 它是依托于这个很多的开源项目，会直接定期的进行更新。那么你的贡献会直接啊、呃，会作为下游来说，会直接加入到进入到 OpenGW 的相关项目当中。那么第二种途径的话，就是如果想要加入的话呢，呃，这边我们是可以先成为会员。那么如果是如果是呃比较正式的啊、呃、开源项目的话呢，呃，其实是我们可能会比较推荐于。这个我不太确定啊，可能会建议说是企业身份加入。那么个人，我、呃、也欢迎大家以个人身份加入。但这里面的话，呃，参与的话呢，就可能要看根据具体的这个软件的开源协议。So basically, there there are two different 
ways to get involved into the open source projects in, uh, which OpenHW leads or use. So first is you can just you can contribute your uh, patch or codes directly to the upstream, just like the GCC and ARVM. So uh, once you once your uh, patch gets merged into the upstream, uh, we OpenGW projects as the downstream will get uh, will will get the benefit get the benefits from your code, and we will say thank you. So and the other and the, and the second way is, uh, I think you may prefer is that uh, basically just like the call five two ten you want to get involved. So you, uh, basically I'm not sure. So correct me if uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so basically, you uh, should mm, be the member of the uh, OpenW, and so you uh, can to, to so so you can uh, submit a contribution to the projects. Uh, and uh, some projects you may need uh, the the identity of the corporation uh, uh, corporation uh, member, and uh, but some uh, you you maybe you can uh, contribute as an individual member. This basically. Uh, depend on how the, the the license that the the open source projects use. Yeah, that's correct. We um, one can contribute as an individual uh, without even an open hardware membership, but we do can uh, encourage uh, companies or organizations to join open hardware for their staff uh, to contribute and uh, participate in the discussions and the task group meetings. Uh, and, and for those uh, activities, it's important to be an open hardware member. But as an individual, you can contribute to the open source projects just like any other open source project. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I have, uh, oh, well, this, there's quite a few questions here. Um, most of those are in Chinese, so uh, I'll have to let we uh, asked those questions, but there was one question that I had, and maybe we can ask Min Chi. Um, and you know, if we look at the different stakeholder groups in China that are concerned with open hardware and Risk Five development, uh, such as uh, CRVA, CNRV, uh, CRVIC, BOSC, these are all communities of uh, of people that are interested in in this topic. And I'm just wondering, you know, from your perspective, what what are the, some of the most interesting work streams that we had de identified in the AWG work plan? You were involved with that, uh, such as, you know, open processor cores, uh, uh, verification approach, uh, software, system on chip, et cetera. What, what are some of the most interesting areas for those organizations to collaborate with AWG? Yeah, okay, I, I think I can answer uh, the question first uh, in Chinese and uh, yes, to translate in English. Yeah. Uh, this is what I would say. Um, first, uh, this is open hardware or AWG. This is this we can provide a platform for the developer to create a IP. 工具和软件，嗯，然后另外就是还有一个就是可以提供这个基础设施，可以去呃托管这个呃这个开源的应用组织，嗯，所以说是对呃就是对我们这边其他的一些这种就是瑞斯巴的相关的这些组织呢，我
a cooperation, a partitionship, and especially in uh, IP uh, verification approach uh, and, uh, and software such as com compilers, uh, operating systems, and, uh, and this I very uh, interested in, in China, uh, I think. Thank you. Yeah, and and I like to and I, I'd like to append some uh, more information. Uh, so uh, first in Chinese and uh, and second uh, I will translate in in English. Uh, so generally, so the is OpenGW and uh, foreign like CNRV, CRVA, CRVIC. These uh, culturally, so is have some uh, different places. So, like CNRV, it is actually a software engineering team. 啊，群体本身来说的话，是主要是做一些技术交流和这个活动，呃，活动的组织，嗯，包括一些呃，做的开源项目呢，包括一些小的翻译项目和一些小的呃，进行过一些尝试。那么 CRVA 和 CRVIC 它实际上是主要的成员是一个企业，那么这些企业呢，主要的工作其实是起到一个行业协调、信息共享啊、呃、这样的工作。那么实际就我而言，不一定对啊，就我而言的话。呃，其实目前为止的话，并没有一个开源的和是在维护的。那么跟类似的话，呃，跟 OpenGW 相关的功能类似的话，有可能是像 BOSC， 可能是呃更相似一些，它有一定的实际上是在维护、呃、一些相关的开源和。So, uh, I'll append some for more information. Uh, so actually, the local organizations like the CNRV or CRVA, they are kind of different with the OpenGW group. So actually, CNRV was uh, organized by the individual engineers. So its members are basically individuals. Uh, we just uh, uh, have meetings and uh, exchanging the technical skills and uh, and the latest news and uh, progress on the risc five. And uh, the the CRVA group and the CRVIC, um, they they kind of uh, coordinate the. Member, uh, which which mostly the cooperation and the universities, uh, is institutes in China. So, uh, actually, uh, to the best of no, um, maybe I was wrong. Uh, so actually, they are not holding the, uh, long term or or long term uh or tap out purpose oriented, uh, projects. So, um, the most similar to the open education, maybe the 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 BOSC. Uh, organization uh, funded uh, this year, uh, if I if I remember correctly. So they are, they are holding the uh, a few uh, projects uh, uh, aiming to tap out. So actually, I think that's where the Open HW Asia Group uh, can do a very good job uh, to uh, to get to uh, match the uh, the developers and. Uh, uh, especially the the hardware and uh, both the hardware and the software developers and 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 the amateurs to get involved into the uh, industrial level uh, tip out and and the uh, software stack support for the for the risc five course. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's a great area of potential collaboration as well. Um, you know, and, and as we discussed in some of the slides. Open Hardware is doing, you know, its first tape out of a of an MCU device, uh, and it would be very interesting to explore with with BOSC whether we can collaborate on such a project going forward. Um, so that that's a very exciting area of, of potential collaboration, I think. Yeah, so I will do a, a short translate. So, uh, 我认为呃、uh, ，OpenGW 跟国内的这些社区都是有呃能够进行非常好的协作和互补的。啊、uh, ，包括像呃最新成立的 p o s c 也像呃开心院，北京开心院，我们也希望我们也预期在今年和往后能够有很好的协作。Thank you. The, there, there are a number of other questions in in、uh, in the chat window or the Q and A window. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will uh, answer it in Chinese and translate in in、uh, in Bash. So there's a few questions. So, uh, 有一个问题是说 ，IP 验证的一些代码在 GitHub 仓库里吗？呃，这些就是验证的代码的话，有一部分是，呃，我记得的话应该是有的，然后可以直接在 GitHub 仓库里面去寻找。如果没有的话，需要去。如果觉得呃想要找部分如果没有的话，欢迎开一 j u i c e 来进行提问。
那么，呃，第二个问题是我对 RTL 开发有兴趣，呃 ，OpenAI 有没有一些开源的开发教程介绍啊、呃？这部分的话不确定，呃，这个我待会会把我呃翻一下，然后给 Duncan 来来来介绍一下。那么。呃，还有一个问题是，呃，李薇薇问的，就是如果现在现在的 X P U L P 指令集和 Vector 指令集在编码上有很多重叠，那么后续会不会进行调整，避免这个问题？这个可能是技术和和这个 C P U 设计方面的问题。So,、uh, there are three questions. Uh, that have in Chinese. The first is that, um, as as a, as a cause for the I P verification, I、uh, in the GitHub, uh. GitHub account yet.、Uh, so the second question is that、uh, I'm I'm interested in the RTL development.、Uh, do uh, does the open、uh, edge level have group has、uh, any tutorials or or something a、uh, books or、uh, tutorials uh, for for teaching this? So and the third question、uh, that's more technical. So uh, currently the the extension X P U L P. Uh, she has、uh, she has a large amount of、uh, similar similarity with the vector extension. So、um, will 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 it be modified or, or updated、uh, to avoid the duplication? I'm gonna have to. I'll have to print on that. I'm not sure.、Um, but the there's a number of things going on on the vector、uh, extension though in in、uh, in Open Hardware Group. For example, we have a research program on.、Uh, That we we have、uh, co-sponsored with Polytechnic University in Montreal, developing a a, a vector coprocessor,、um, and that's very interesting. We also have work、uh, on the verification side on the vector extension、uh, that has been proposed. That that work that project hasn't、um, officially started, but we're looking at、uh, that work as well.、Uh, so there's lots of interest on. Uh, the vector extensions, and then how that can be utilized together with the X interface、uh, that Davide described in his presentation. Okay, thank you. I will do the translation. Uh,、yeah. so, 简单来说的话，呃、uh, ，简单来说的话，呃，这个问题我们呃，就是我要去，我我不太确定，但是呢，会我有一些呃，已已知的是，我们现在已经有有一些项目实际上是在做跟 Vector 相关的工作。那么，比如说我们跟一些大学，呃，在合作，那么去做对 Vector 进行一些初始化的验证，呃，和和实现。那么同时呢，我们在这个验证方面 ，verification 方面呢，是也有一些计划。那么目前是已经被提出 propose 的，呃，但是但我不确定说这个呃，就是具体的有没有没有有没有开始做，但是它已经是已经被提出，然后是在计划当中。那么还有一些其他方面的跟 Vector 有关的一些工作。啊，是列在我们的规划当中的。Yeah, so so there are uh two different questions. I think I can. Yeah, so about the tutorials. So is there uh tutorials uh, are proposed tutorials. by the OpenGW group? Yeah. <laughs> well, we we definitely have some uh informative presentations. Uh, going deep dive into the verification architecture.、Uh, I think the original question might have been on RTL design. I, I don't think we have any tutorial material on that. But uh, uh, if if the person would like to get in touch with us at info at openhardwaregroup.org,、uh, we can you know see what materials you may have available, and、um, and 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 help.、Uh, Help them、uh, with any suggestions we have. Yeah, so、uh, I will do the translation. Yeah. So, 简单来说的话，我们是有一些呃教程类的啊，或者说是这个技术深入的技术分析和技术呃内部剖析的，主要是一些视频。那么是在网上，在在 YouTube 和其像包包括 B B 上是可以看到的。那么实际上是可以从 Open G W 的账号上去进行一些寻找。那么呃。就是文字性的，呃，当然中文的应该是没有的啊、呃。文字性的呃 ，tutorial 相对来说还是比较少的，主要还是通过视频，呃，和技术分享的形式。And there's a new uh question I'm having in English, so not not sure which. Okay, I'll ask the question. <laughs>、uh, I'll ask you. 
<laughs> the question is about the instruction set architecture. Um, okay, so the question is really uh, that the cores from ETH Zurich had experimental uh, ISA features uh, that were not standardized and how, how to deal with that. Um, and I, 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 I think I can take that. The, um, the, there were some extensions to the, uh, to the ISA, such as pulp extensions, uh, and they're really optimized for things like um, uh, multiply accumulates and, uh, and uh, hardware loops and things like that. A lot of those extensions um, have, have, or some of those extensions have been standardized. And uh, you know we, we would move to things like standard encodings and things where that's available. Uh, in some cases, there are still some custom extensions that are quite useful, uh, for example, in the V2 of the E40P chip. So it really depends on which uh, uh, instruction you're, extension you're talking about and whether we, you know, we'll, we'll use the uh, standardized version or a custom version. Yeah, uh, and uh, I would like to append uh, yeah. some information uh, about the uh, design, design of a RIS-5 and then translate into Chinese. So basically, uh, in the beginning of the design, uh, the design of a RIS-5 specification, uh, the, the designers have considered the, the, the future extension uh, the needs. So actually, actually the, the, uh, the open post design, that's a, that's a re they reserved uh, uh, some uh, kind of area of design, design area. So to let the different vendors to uh, put their own extensions into the custom custom OP codes. So uh, that's, that's, that's a totally uh, design by purpose. So there's no, that's not a concept of fragmentation. And, the, and also that any, uh, Designers is that is that researchers or the comp, uh, or the vendors uh, if they uh, design their new open course in the custom uh, area, so that's uh, they can they can use all the all the standard standard software and uh, components that uh, the uh, which which uh, obey the the risk five uh, specific uh, ESA specification. Yeah, great answer. Yeah. So uh, now. 呃，简单来说的话，就是碎片化来说的话，这里呢是要分成两种情况来来来解释的。那么一种呢，它其实不是碎片化。那么 RISC-V 从它的设计的开始，就考虑到说我们后面可能会有很多的厂商定制的部分，那么是需要不同的研究人员和厂商可能有自己特定的需求。所以在设计上的时候，其实是预留了，就是指令集的指令集的码表上，其实是预留了一部分区域，专门给不同的厂商来进行自我的定制化的。那么这部分呢，其实是不会影响到标准的软件软件的使用，也不会引起碎片化的。那么第二种的话，就是在第二种其实是呃 r e s p a 指令集它是不断的在进行发展，那么有不停有不停不停的有新的指令被提出。这部分它其实大部分情况，绝大部分情况下是向后兼容的，所以就是新的指令的提出是不会影响到呃之前的部分的。对，那么在 OpenHW 的设计上来说啊，我们其实。呃，也是遵循了 RISC-V 及 RISC-V 整个社区这样的一些呃基本的规范的啊、呃，所以说呃这个这个这种的话，我们其实并不理解它，我们理解上它并不是构成呃就是通俗或者是呃其他一其他领域当中的碎片化。So let's see if there are some new questions on the Bilibili platform. Okay. Well, thank yeah, you to the so, thank you to the people from Billy Billy for uh, for typing in their questions as well. That's great. Yeah. So, so there, there's uh, uh, there's one question uh, that so uh, is is the uh, architecture or the the information of the architecture, the information of the uh, the the uh, member uh, the the member of MPW and the the contact to the W public. Yeah, um, this presentation will be on the uh, Open Hardware TV, uh, so you can find the this whole seminar will be there. It's public, so you can find the link on the Open Hardware uh, website. So that's www.open 
hw.org. And you can look on the resources menu and you'll find links to the open hardware TV. Um, and anybody who's interested in looking at the PDF or anything, please send uh, us an email or, or you can send me a, a, a message on WeChat uh, using my credential that I provided earlier and we'll get you um, copies of you know the PDF of, of the presentations that you're interested in. Okay, thank you. 呃，简单来说的话，就是 OpenHW 组织的组织架构、成员信息、联系方式，其实都是公开的。我们有一个公开的网站，可以去就 OpenW Group， 呃，可以去检索。代码呢是放在 GitHub 上。那么，包括今天的这些呃技术分享和这个在线的活动，呃，都是会公开在呃，问情况下是在是在 YouTube 的 Open OpenW TV 上。呃，哎，我不确定是不是 ，Sorry， 我不确定是不是呃 YouTube 啊，啊是。可以通过 Open H W T V 来进行呃访问。那么，如果是对这个演过程当中的一些呃演讲材料、幻灯片或者 slides 有兴趣的话呢，也如果有兴趣的话，也可以直接给任可发邮件。Maybe I can ask one question for、uh, Yunhai. Uh, so, uh, Yunhai, uh, as as I think was pointed out, is the co-chair of our software task group. Uh, so Yunhai, what what areas of software development for open source uh, Risk Five processors? You know what 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 areas of software uh, development will be important in the future? Beyond the, I know that you're working on the HAL for the um, Core Five devices, and that will help. Uh, Adapt the SDK to any of our our different uh, processors. Be, so, uh, what what's what's the what's the future look like for software requirements for open source uh, Risk Five processors? Okay, I will first in Chinese and this sure. then to some translate. Yeah, uh, 我我认为啊，其实其实对于一个呃，开源的一个硬件啊，还是一个处理器来讲，首先第一层的软件呢，其实是是对它最基础的软件，包括 compiler， 包括呃汇编器，还有链接器，还有模拟器这一系列的最最最基础的软件。那这是组成它说让一个硬件可以 work 被使用起来的最基础的条件，这是第一层的。那第二层的话，其实会是说面向芯片所使用的。一些基础的 BSP 软件，还有刚才提到的 h a i r 的一些基层基础的软件，包括说整整体把芯片封装出来这个 SDK， 然后交付到整个用户中使用过程中的。但是其实在，在嗯，这个其实是让开发者可以正常把一个硬件可以使用起来的一个基础条件。然后第三层来讲的话，其实就会慢慢面向它各个领域方向的一些。基础软件，这些基础软件是会包括一些最基础的一些算法库，还有面向行业领域的一些，可能是嗯 demo， 或者说是一些呃面向行业的，就比如说电机领域的一些呃，可能是余弦，然后正弦，然后克拉克斯，就类类似的这种算法的一些变化，它其实是辅助这个行业，可以让它让整个硬件在这个行业能 run 的非常高效的一些。呃，一些软件，然后其实我我认为，其实慢慢的是把我们这个三层的基础软件填充起来之后，那我们开发者其实就可以像就是非常的方便的把我们的硬件很高效的使用起来，那我们的硬件产品啊，它也就很快的嗯、呃、去说在我们真正的产品中铺铺开来，所以说我觉得其实对于 software 来讲，其实它会有一个。三个过程的一个基础软件的一个往上累加的一个过程。OK， I will I will I will try to uh in in English yeah. Uh, I think uh, uh this this uh, the software stack will uh be uh will be separated to three level and uh, so Software stack. The first stack is the very basic infrastructure for the And processor and hardware, hardware. The first step, first level is uh, compiler and uh, uh, emulator and assembler and uh, and another very basic in infrastructure to us for the 
a basic uh, development to to tell the user and help the user to how to use the hardware and use the process. Yes, this is the first level um, basically in to us for the process and uh, hardware. And the second level uh, software is uh, mm, for is uh, like uh, SDK BSP. This uh, this level software to help uh, developer how to use the um, the board, how to use the chip, and how to use the peripherals, and uh, um, tell uh, and help them to um, put this the hardware into the application areas. And this is the second level uh, software. And the, the third level uh, software is that uh, to uh, do some algorithm libraries and uh, do some domain specific uh, libraries for the applications to have use have user to use the hardware very efficiently and uh, very uh, high, uh, with to to use the hardware and uh, uh, have them to uh, put, let the application very uh, in high performance and uh, during this application how to adopt the hardware. Yeah, I think this is really and the future the software um, developer in the practice. Uh, I think it's the the most specific uh, software is. Uh, um, very very important for to uh, let the hardware and um, let the hardware be a product and uh, can be used by the developer and used by the uh, uh, and uh, and uh, and the user. Yes. Thanks. Thanks. And and you know, I just so people can understand, that's the sort of roadmap issue that that we're looking to define in the Asia Working Group. And your participation in these discussions would would be very very um, welcome. Uh, you know, uh, way I, I think we maybe are almost out of time. Uh, do you do you have any last questions that you'd like to ask? Yeah, let me see. Um, oh, there are, there are no new questions on the Bilibili platform and the Q and A session. Uh, okay. Well, I I think we can uh, uh, wrap up and and thank. Uh, all the participants, the the panelists or the the speakers who were recorded, uh, worked hard to produce their presentation. So thanks to them, and thank you to the uh, steering committee members and Wei uh, here who who made a good Q and A session. And uh, again, thank thank you to all the audience, both on uh, uh, both on Zoom and on Billy Billy. And uh, please uh, feel free to contact us. us us for questions at uh, openhardware.org uh, and we'll uh, openhardwaregroup.org and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Uh, Wei, do you have any final thoughts? Maybe in Chinese? Yeah, so I, I, I will talk uh, in Chinese. Uh, 感谢各位参加, uh, 感谢 Open, Open HW Group Duncan, uh, uh, open the uh, 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 well, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so please connect me. I can't. I can't speak Chinese yet, but I please connect me there and uh, we'll yeah. talk. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone, and we'll. Uh, I think we'll end the uh, the the broadcast now. So th thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm.